there was tremendous energy at Coney Island, and every foot would be taken up with having fun. You could go to heaven and hell, you could go to the moon, you could go to the future, and uh, people wanted to go see what their lives in America would be like in the future. One of the greatest pieces of whimsy at Coney was the early Elephant Hotel. It was a, a real hotel built in the shape of an elephant. Tin roof, it had an observatory in the, in the Huda. It had shops in the feet, and you could actually rent rooms there. He himself often said that serious architecture had no more place in an amusement park than a, a clown at a, at a funeral. I mean, it was supposed to be a place outside of your ordinary experience. You had castle turrets next to obelisks, uh, next to pagodas. It was like a combination of all the architecture in the world made into sort of a grand Dr. Seuss-like place uh, that was totally alien to our experience. Dreamland was the third of the parks and the most monumental, and it was supposed to surpass the other two, uh, particularly in terms of family entertainment didn't really quite come off. It's not as beautiful as Luna Park. It's a little too big, a little too white, but it was very much supposed to be a place where you brought the family and you saw very edifying spectacles, such as creation. You'd see the creation of the earth and you'd see these kind of analogies to heaven and people would be dressed up like angels and cherubim. And then you had Hellgate, the opposite, where they would go in and see what awaited them if they did terrible things. Fighting Flames was this sort of fake tenement that was set on fire uh, every day at Dreamland. And acrobats would dive out of the windows pretending to be people uh, who lived in the tenement. And a fake fire department would come and put it out and everyone would go and applaud. It was something which I thought was absolutely fascinating because here were these people going to see this, many of whom lived in constant fear of fire themselves in their overcrowded cities, um, in, their, in their own real life tenements. And it really occurred to me seeing that, that to them, Dreamland and Luna Park and Steeplechase and the rest of Coney Island was a sort of giant screen on which they projected their own best hopes and worst fears for their future in America. Great entrepreneurs at Coney Island would take these black and white photographs of the parks, which were then sent over to Germany and meticulously uh, hand-painted. And people sent millions of these off around the world.